Chapter 6, Oh, the Cold. Loud alarms rang out, startling Anastasia awake, both surprised by the alarms and the fact she couldn't remember falling asleep. She got up from her bed, running out the door into the hallway. Her training gave her a higher ranking of security, giving her the right to leave her room while her friends ran back into theirs. She ran down the long hallway and around several corners till she saw it. A large crater had been blasted into the wall. The smell of lilac filled her nostrils, and she knew who created it. She ran faster now, the hallways getting darker as she went down floor after floor till she was deep underground in front of a large metal door marked security. Anastasia placed her hand on the pad next to the door, unlocking it. The door melted away, revealing her worst fear. In the middle of the room was a security pod with Phoenix unconscious suspending in its fluid. A faint scent of lilac was still in the air, but not as strong as it was when he was in her room earlier that evening. The pod was heavily guarded, no one allowed near it. She walked into a small observation room where Agent Frank stood looking out the window towards the pod with a smirk on his face. She was enraged and fought not to wipe it off for him. Agent Frank turned to her and spoke with a sneer in his voice. It will seem that you won't be my replacement after all seeing as how I caught him after all this time. She cleared her throat before speaking back. What are they going to do with him? You know very well what they will do to him. You know, Agent Frank, now that he's captured, You're out of a job. Not yet. There's still a task of finding a human that was harboring him all this time. Agent Frank turned and walked out of the room, his hands behind his back. Turning toward the pod, Agent Frank spat at the floor, then walked out of the security room. Anastasia found herself alone in the small observation room, looking at the pod too, but with a look of fear in her eyes. She knew what the council was going to do to Phoenix, and it made her ill. Her head was hung and pressed against the glass when she heard his voice in her head. It's not your fault, Anastasia. She looked up at the pod. His body was still motionless, but at the same time, it looked like it was changing. She looked harder at it as his wings dissolved away. His once dark brown hair was turning blue as a pair of smaller, sleeker wings grew out of his back. She watched closer as the mist that had been flowing from the pod started to recede back into it. A blue light began to emit from the pod, throwing shadows on the floor. She was worried the cyber warriors that guarded the pod would notice, but they didn't almost as if they had been turned off. Anastasia walked out of the observatory a couple feet towards the pod. Closer to it, she walked knowing that at any moment, one of the guards would try to stop her. Not one moved. She stood in front of the pod and reached a hand up to touch it. By now she would be stopped, right? Still, they didn't move. Her hand stopped from touching it. The cold it admitted shot pain through her fingers more than she could bear. She knew it must be hell for Phoenix. After all, he was reported as being fire-based, like herself. Though she wasn't sure now, with the changes she saw from the inside of the observatory, the blue light that had been radiating from the pod went out quickly causing the pod to grow pitch black. For the first time since she started toward the pod, one of the guards moved. It dropped its weapon, picked her up lightly, and moved her back away from the pod. 
It then stood in front of her, as if to act like a shield, protecting her. The pod exploded with an abundance of power and force, destroying the other five guards still standing around it. The one that had moved her jerked forward for a moment before falling, its back completely destroyed from the blast, but it served its purpose. Anastasia looked up from the fallen cyber warrior back to the shattered pod. Phoenix stood in the center, his head held high. Long, light blue hair fell down his back between a pair of sleek wings. Turning his head toward her, his dark blue eyes looked down at her as he spoke without words. Are you okay? Yes, but what happened to you? Is that something they did to you? This was done by me. Then they wish they knew how to do this. Phoenix stepped down from the pod's base, crushing some of what had been a guard. Not sure if I ever get used to become a water beast. His hair became a dark brown, while the wings grew larger, splitting into four. Eyes returned to their original color as the feathers on the wings became red with black along the edges. <laughs>